We'll get started. Am I supposed to click anywhere or do anything? Oh, just go to twitch.tv slash mechanics chess and then mute it. And welcome everyone to the Mechanics Institute on this Wednesday evening, the final round of the 2020-2021 Pan American Intercollegiate Chess Championship. I'm Abel Talamantes, Chess Director, and joining me, as has been throughout the tournament, Grandmaster Nick DeFermian, Feedy Master Paul Whitehead, and we have our very special guest, Grandmaster Patrick Wolf, two-time U.S. Champion and Mechanics Institute Trustee. Thanks for joining us, Patrick. Good to be here. Himself, a fellow uh, a veteran of the Pan Ams, playing for Yale back in the day, and sure. we're... Uh, okay. And we're back, back, back in the day a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, we are following the action here with the Webster University a full point ahead of the rest of the field going into the final round. And they are playing on the top table the Golden Bears of UC Berkeley, UC Berkeley Team A. And this is their board one, Grandmaster Lazaro Bruzon Batista for Webster against International Master Joshua Sheng. This is going to be a tough match for the for the for the Cal Bears, but uh, we're going to fight on and see what we can do. What I'm, I'm going on record, you know, that it's a tough match for Webster. They're going to go down. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can go on record, right, and then live with the uh, the the Berkeley pride forever, right? So we're pulling for an upset, but uh, what do you think here, uh, Joshua Sheng having to play black? You know, we, we've had these great best commentators, um, you know, John Donaldson from before, and we're so lucky to have Patrick Wolf. I, yes, I, uh, can someone please um, give me the link I need? Oh, it's uh, uh, twitch.tv and then slash mechanics chess. Okay, thanks. And then uh, you will see what we see on the board. Including yourself. <laughs> Well, right now I see an ad, but but then I will see what. The yeah, ad once you get to the Buffalo Wild Wings or the Charmin ad, uh, you'll see the uh, <laughs> <laughs> you'll see the chest come up. <laughs> uh, this one was a building, but anyway. Okay, there we are. Um, okay, Batista versus Shang. Yep. Yes. And what I see is Batista just played e4. Out of a King's Indian attack. Is interesting. I guess I personally would have waited on that, but I understand. So, He's going to uh, chase that white squared bishop, huh? Yeah, which is probably probably fine. So let's see, probably takes, takes, and then I guess if bishop g4, maybe you play e5. No, then takes, takes, knight e5. So I guess takes, takes, bishop g4, rook e1 or something like that, um, knight c4. Five. Looks know. like you could go e5 because of bishop f3, ef6. Ef6, yeah. Bishop g2, yeah. That's true. And yeah, then, maybe that works. So then takes, takes bishop g6, knight h4. Um, okay. I guess knight h4 anyway, probably. And then uh, going on to board two in this uh, top table matchup, here's uh, international master elect Josiah Stearman playing white against grandmaster Benjamin Gladuda for Webster. And uh, Josiah offered a draw. Oh, no. Ooh. And they, they probably considered taking it, right? Because all you need is one, one win, right? When did he offer the draw? Uh, not sure exactly where. But it's not on this move, but on a previous move. Yeah, on a previous move, I just don't know which. But they're on move eight. You know, that's psychologically very interesting and may maybe their best chance to win the match. I, I don't understand why White is offering a draw in, in this situation, I mean, the, the the games that they're hoping to win have to be with the white pieces, right? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Well, I don't know much about these team matches and the strategies behind it. 
I mean, maybe I, it's psychological. And I imagine after nine rounds, because it's, it's you know it's been three brutal days for all the teams, they might say, all right. You know, maybe two or three of these matches will just take draws and we'll have it all come down to one one match. I mean, the reality is is that uh, Webster only needs a draw in this match to win the title. And the draw was accepted. It is. Oh. Right? I mean, the reality is that Webster only I needs to draw the this... Let's look at another game. This match. Mm. And, and this is board three, uh, Grandmaster Aram Hakobian for Webster, who's delivered some exciting games uh, over the last few days uh, against uh, Fide Master Roland Fang on board three on the top table. So like you say, it's a numbers game and they're just going to go with the games that, I mean, has there been a draw for on this board at all? No. Nope. Yeah, and uh, going on to board four, White here with uh, international master Ladia Jurasek against Grandmaster Alexander Lenderman. Well, this is just fun for Black, right? Oh, this could be drawn pretty quickly, I guess. But you know, you'd probably rather be Black. Now, the the team dynamic here is the the reality is. Uh, uh, Webster all, only needs a draw to win the tournament outright, but on the second table, St. Louis University is playing the UC Berkeley uh, B team, um, and uh, they, I mean they outrate that team by quite a quite a bit. But there's going to be a big fight in uh, the table three match because on table three, it's uh, Missouri. Uh, against uh, the Webster Team B. And then on table four, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley against University of Texas at Dallas A Team. Because the players are not just playing for this tournament. The top four schools qualify for the college chess final four. So uh, they're playing for a lot, not just having to do in this tournament, but also uh, looking ahead. No, yeah, Josiah had a great individual result, that's for sure. Um, so moving on to the table two with UC Berkeley B team, here's uh, women international master Ashrita Iswaran, who's competed in the U.S. Women's Championship, uh, playing Grandmaster Benjamin Bach. I like black. This out of a Carol Khan. So Black just goes like Rook D E eight check here, right? And then ninety five or something. I just think White's position is pretty bad, right? Like if ninety two, ninety four. If um, I mean King D one drops the F pawn, then if King F one, like you said, then ninety five. That just looks good for Black. Yeah, Black is already probably more than equal. And uh, Stearman was in the chat, six and a half out of nine, not bad. <laughs> not bad at all, especially no, with board two, and especially playing nothing but the top teams, this uh, UC Berkeley A team. So uh, fantastic job, Josiah Stearman. And I have to say, he made a draw with the map just tied. Berkeley's strategy should be just draw three quick games and win the, lot, the fourth one. And then just find a way. <laughs> and here on board, uh, is this board three? Well, this is the UC Berkeley B team. And uh, we have Timu Vertinen, uh, Fide Master, a former champion of Finland, uh, playing for the Cal Bears against Grandmaster Alexander Ipatov. This looks pretty good for white, right? Probably. B team is suffering a bit more than the A team.
Yeah, Black needs to find a way to sort of get out of the, the bind here. Yeah. Maybe rookie sick. Then bishop h3. Or knight g5 or something. Knight g5 hangs the knight, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's just a minor detail. Oh, that's okay. I do it all the time. <laughs> There's a interesting position in the uh, table three matchup between uh, Webster B and Missouri, and I'm going to go to that game right now. This is Grandmaster John Burke against Grandmaster Christopher Repka. Well, these guys are not wasting any time getting into the late middle game. Yeah. How opening was this? Like in a Rui Lopez. <laughs> Rui Lopez? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, um, so Black's got a moment here to Queen C four. Which still looks good for white, I think, right? After takes, takes D, E, sets. But at least it's playable. Mm -hmm. I guess you, or you can play rook C8, I guess. Probably rook on A to C8. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I guess you can't you can't move the knight on c three, right? It's, um, or what if rook a yeah rook a c eight ninety two looks like no no that hangs the rook on a two yeah. That probably forces an end game. Yeah. You take. But then you go d6, and you're going to follow up with rook b8 real fast, and that's scary. Yeah, if white can make something of that d pawn. Yeah, d6 is a nice move. Queen C four. I guess if yeah, if Queen C four. Queen B six might, but no, I think he. I don't know, man. What a mess. Queen B six. Oh yeah. That's a nice move, threatening the e pawn. But yes, but what happens? Queen C four, Queen B six, Queen takes C three. Um, yeah. You don't want to take that e pawn right. because you lose a rook to a back rank checkmate. Yes, indeed. Queen so takes pawn check and rook takes knight, right? Queen d4 check. So queen c4. So first of all, if queen c4, queen takes c4, knight takes c4, d takes e6. Like that just looks good for white, right? Knight takes c4. Knight uh, takes e5. Yeah, but knight takes e5, and then like you got knight e5. I mean, obviously, only white's trying to win, right? And yeah. then we just don't know what's going on. But if if queen c4, if queen b6, then um, if queen takes, well, if queen b6, you can go e takes d. Uh, no, then queen takes b2, I guess. Weirdly. Uh, no, no, queen c4, queen b6, queen takes c3 is good for block. But then if queen takes e6, check king h8, and rook a takes b2? Queen d4, check king h1, queen takes b2. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, queen b6 looks... Yankee. Yeah, so you got a queen takes e4 and pawn takes pawn, I guess. With, with white a little better in that end. Uh, 
Yeah. What do you think? Might be a lot, don't you think, Nick? Um. So yeah, you'll probably win the apon. Because the thing is, if rook a e eight, you've got rook takes a six, and if rook f e eight, you've got knight d five with the knight c seven, four. And um. Maybe maybe. So take take d six rook f e eight. Knight d5. Rook a7. Rook, rook a c8. Not rook a7. Oh, rook a7. Um, then e7. Knight g6. Are we able to get that pawn and secure a draw, or have you got a, a nice shot there? Can well, I make a comment? What about queen c4, queen b6, knight d3? Yeah, no, I think we that, I think we agree Queen B six is off the table. Oh, oh, oh okay. I thought that's well, what we were looking at. Queen C four, Queen takes Queen, Knight takes Queen, Pawn takes Pawn on E six. Ah. And we're trying to figure out if Black has some way to corral that. Um. And I, for one, can't tell. So if Rook F E eight, Knight D five. Then rook e6, knight c7. Right. So that's why you've got to go something. So Nick was suggesting rook a7. Um, White's got two e pawns. No, if, we're taking we're taking on what, e5. What's that? Are you? Well, going to take e5? But if 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 rook a7 there. Um, I mean, you can play e7, right? And then if rook d7? No, no, knight g6. We're going to try to hit the e pawn. What do you mean knight g6? The knight okay, the line is queen c4, queen takes c4, knight takes c4, pawn takes e6. Oh, I, I was going to go knight e5. I'm sorry. Okay. You're, you were okay. saying rook e8. Okay. okay, so if knight e5, then you can go rook e1 or something, right? That's why I was thinking maybe you tack the, the e pawn without taking the you tack the e six pawn without because I think if knight e five rookie one maybe there's knight d three there actually maybe you go rookie two instead of rookie one. But but Patrick, you'd say white's white's better in that ending. White has the winning chances and blacks. Don't you think? Right? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything better than queen c four? If we go rook a c8, rook a takes b2, queen takes c3. Okay, well, here we go. It's, I guess it's going to happen. Takes take d6, right? Yeah, and, and that you're right. That's rook to f5, but... No, rook ooh. f5 loses immediately, right? The rook b8 check? Yeah, that, that'll... Did black lose a tempo by doing this? So it looks like the main line on here is... Rook to a takes b2, queen takes c3, queen takes queen, rook takes queen d6. And now the tactical idea is if black goes rook c5, say, there's rook b8. And now rook takes e5 here loses to rook takes rook check, king takes rook, rook b8, check, king f7, d7. And meanwhile, it's not at all clear how. Uh, like what else black is gonna do? Probably the rook would have to sit on b5 because of that powerful d pawn. Yeah. Well, as we wait to see how that action develops, let me go back to board one on table one with uh, Batista and Shang. Whoa! Wow. Something happened here, huh? As as my daughter likes to say, jalapeno. <laughs> jalapeno. <laughs> and uh, and Nick, you you were trying to be optimistic and show your UC Berkeley pride, <laughs> but Josiah Stearman's in the chat. Uh, 
maybe not quite as up, not quite as optimistic as we we're trying to be. <laughs> yeah, this is not looking good for for. It is looking um, tough. It is looking for tough. black here. Yeah. Batista is a great player. And uh, the other game was this game. Oh, okay. So this looks bad, but King, let's go back to that one for a sec. Yeah, yeah, takes... yeah, yeah. I'll go back to that game. Uh, so King takes knight, pawn takes knight, right? Now knight takes e5. It's coming up. I know it looks insane, but let's... So if bishop c5 check, I'm just going to go king takes e6. Because why not? And if uh, bishop g5, obviously f6, that's probably not so good. And pawn takes pawn on f7. I'm going to go king takes f7 and, I don't know, pray or something. It looks pretty <laughs> ugly. So it looks pretty bad. So prayer is part of the combination here, the analysis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about queen c7 check here? That looks very strong. That looks uncomfortably. I guess the king would have to come up to e6. Oh, but then rook takes rook. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks like the game right there. Oh, that was the whole point. Yeah. No, I. I <laughs> what's a rook between friends? You know? well, Paul, I have to say, you're spoiling the fun. <laughs> it's like, you're telling me the ending of the movie. Easy <laughs> 7 looks pretty brutal. Because you got to go king e8, right? And then, um, and then I think bishop c5 looks like it's probably, or pawn takes pawn check, knight takes pawn, just keep it simple, and then bishop c5, right? I, I, hi, Grant Owen. Grant Owen is in the chat. I was told to offer draw. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and if you were, you were, you were ordered, Grant, he was ordered to offer a draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think I think you're right, Paul. I think Queen C seven, King eight, E takes F seven, Knight takes F seven, Bishop C five, just looks completely kaput. But I try line Queen C seven check, King takes E six, Rook takes D eight, Rook takes D eight, Queen takes D eight, Knight F three check. There Maybe you go. Something like G two, and then Queen C six. I don't see a check for White at least, so. You know, I'm hoping. Yeah, but you go, but but you don't go king g two. You go king h one. And same move, queen c six. Rook c one. Oh, there's no double check. There's no double check, right? Actually, even the double check looks fine. By the way, you can go king g two, rook c one, and then either knight h four, double check. I think, I think you can just go king h three. Although you'd never do this in blitz, right? Oh no, you can't. No, that's checkmate. Actually, check. And queen h5 and queen f5. That's why you don't do it. So, um, oh, Patrick, if you see a checkmate against the bad guys, please tell us. But I think you just go, I think you just go, um, I think you just go king h1, right? That should do it. Is black gonna play king e6? Yes, he does, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> may, as, may as well, you're desperate. <laughs> yeah, the great move. Absolutely a great move. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't work somehow, but... Well, weren't, weren't we saying praying was allowed a little earlier? Right. Maybe black will play queen c6 before knight f3 check. There's, there's nothing wrong with talking to God. The only problem is if he talks back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem if he talks back. <laughs> well, from a, from a, from a tournament... From a from a non-cheating perspective. <laughs> oh right, right. Yeah, but King H one is just over, right? Mm. But I love the chutzpah. Yeah, this is what you have to do. I guess you could go King G two, Queen C six, King H three. Yeah. Like really feel like you need to. I have to tell you, Patrick, for the first time ever in a blitz game, I deliberately put my queen in take in a lost position, <laughs> and my opponent did he, not see it. He loves, so proud I of that. His queen. <laughs> so, it was so. the first time I'd ever done it. I felt so guilty and ashamed of myself, and yet it worked. 
It was amazing. I've watched so many, uh, you know, swindlers and people try that trick. Brooksy won. Let's see, one looks pretty straight. Aww. Yeah. That is the game. Aww. Yeah. Lazaro Bruzon Batista gets a point for Webster. And, and did Stearman take a draw in a winning position? Is that what happened? No. Yeah, it was dead <laughs> it was dead one. And here's the position. <laughs> well, these things are going quick, huh? <laughs> and uh, oh I got word from uh Josiah, that uh, Timu lost his game for the... Uh, wow, this is it's ridiculous how fast this is going. In the UC Berkeley B team, and here is the end. Look at that. White, look at that move right there. Bam. Oh, nice, nice, uh, nice. Oh, you got to put that one on a... I like a white to move and win. Uh, it's like a puzzle, right? Like a puzzle. Uh, nice. Tough one there. Let's check in on uh, Ashrita Eswaran against uh, Benjamin Bach here. It's uh, going to be up to uh, UC Berkeley B to uh, put the glass slipper on. Excuse me? Get the Cinderella, the Cinderella story. H5. Looks like you have to try to break out here with the Why rook. Not, takes f7. Yeah, what about that? <laughs> 91, I guess, huh? That's the problem. Yeah. And uh, checking on another game for the UC Berkeley, the top board on UC Berkeley. Uh, B team, I believe. This is uh, Fide Master Ryan Tagazadi, who's playing white for Cal against uh, Darius Swears for uh, St. John Lewis. really spoke hot. Am this I, is. Am I allowed to say that um, white's position sucks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even if you weren't, you did it. So. Uh, that's that's why I phrased it in the form of a question. <laughs> I mean, well, White's, not, White's, I mean, guess, the exchange yeah, up. To be fair, it's not over, I guess. Like, White is the exchange up, and it just looks like such a nice position for Black. But, you know. Yes, it does. Not not clear. I guess you play A5 here, right? You know, let me... Hey, you know, okay, I'm biased. You know, I'm biased. There's no argument, but all right. You know, that was a good move. That bishop was doing nothing. A5 or some logical move, go bishop F3. You know, you try to reduce the pressure. You've got the exchange. You try to win the ending. But if bishop F3... That's, two, gonna, that's a double pawns. You're going to take, and then you're going to go knight D3, right? So maybe... And then rook b1. Checking on uh, Lenderman and Ladia's game here. The Battle of the Elves. <coughs> well, this is just. Can you can you scroll back? How did White lose that pawn just so wow. effortlessly? So here's Lottie has got oh Lenderman is is black. Wow. Yeah, so here. Yikes. Can you like scroll back a bit? I'm like surprised. Like somehow somehow black just was able to Yeah, right there. Roll all the pieces around and can you just go back like ten moves or something? Oh, ten? Sure. Just go, like, what happened here? Like, the last time we looked at this, it didn't look like it should be that bad for white. Like here? No, even farther. Farther. 
here. Go back. All right, here, here, here. So takes, queen takes queen, knight takes queen, bishop c4. It's coming. So this is this is um, this is a, a perfect schematic win by Black here, or you know, win of the d pawn. I mean, is White supposed to play bishop takes d5? I think right here before Black plays rook d8. Um, maybe that was the maybe that was the issue right there. Yeah, maybe maybe instead of rook f d one, you should go bishop takes c five, e takes d five, and b three. Um, because I, I think I've seen these kind of positions where black it, it's like the d pawn is just lost. <laughs> I think there was some game of Capablancas that I remember playing over and. Oh, but I I think you're right, Paul. Like maybe so. I mean, I don't think this position should be lost for white at all by the way. I think white should be okay here, but somehow, okay, so I think you're right. You could have gone bishop takes d5, e takes d5, and then like play b3 and h3 and just sort of like, you've only got one weakness, right? You're not supposed to lose when you only have one weakness, <coughs> right? What do you think, Nick? Well, I, I agree with Popsich. But, but that, yeah. okay, but, but Nick, white should be okay here, right? Like white should, I mean, yeah, black's a little better, but. Yeah, white should still hold the draw at this point. You yeah, think okay, so? What happened here? Yeah. Okay. So what happened? What's the way of holding it? Okay. Oh, so bishop e two was passive. That bishop was passive, and g three looks passive. So white didn't find the plan here. Yeah, I mean, black has made very logical moves, and white's done kind of nothing. All right, and now black's able to just. Yeah. Black's also able to take with the rook on d5, and that's that that's a huge thing here. Yeah. And now knight e7. Yeah, okay. White just, like, had no ideas, basically, and just let the pawn go. And now black goes, what, knight f5? Yeah. Now, now, pause a moment. Can we go rook c7? Can we hang on instead of rook c8? Yeah, rook c7 looks a lot more logical, doesn't it? Or or at least attacking a pawn. Yeah. Rook c7, and then, um, yeah. And then this is... I agree, Nick. Yeah, rook c7 looks like it was a, yeah. Now it's just, now it's just over. And this is the... Oh, wow. This is the position Try right fight. now. Okay. Well, if you're Capa Blanca, you can win these four to three end game, four versus three end games. Look, look at this position on uh, between Aram Hakobian and Roland Feng. Well, Black's lost, right? Whoa! Yikes! Yikes is right. Let's uh, move over to. Uh, How'd that happen, Ashrita? Oh, that G7 pawn is going, huh? Yeah, so going back a few moves in the other game, uh, this is what happened. Just like a ton of pressure right there on the D6. No, but go back some more, because the, the position we saw before, can you scroll back like 10 moves or something? Because like, the opening position looks fine. For, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. More. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not showing up. Okay, all right, okay. We should go back to the first move. <laughs> but I mean, right, so I think it's H6. Can you go back one more move? Yeah. Yeah, so what, did white play knight E2 here? Is that the move here? Yep. Knight C2, okay. The black looks like he's got a good game. Why? Yeah, so I don't like h6. Mm. Doesn't do anything. That was the yeah, very, I agree. That was the very Silly. next move. I would I would prefer to play. Um, so if knight g6, I guess white goes h4 probably, right? Um, 
maybe you should play bishop b8 here in order to prepare d5. That's a great looking move. Mm. Black could get central action, it would be good. Yeah, yeah, nice move, Patrick. Well, I don't know if it's good, though, because the bishop b8, white's going to go f4, right? You could take on f4. Oh, bishop f6, fg3, that doesn't look good for black. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, yeah, right. f4, so, maybe, uh, I see. F4, H maybe knight g6. Yes, yes, knight g6. Yeah. Yes. But I think this is a critical moment. if, Because black played h6, right? And then white right. played f4? Correct. Right? Yep. Yeah, and then I think white's just better, right? Like, huh. Nimzovich would be proud. Yeah. White. Yeah, this is like, man, this is nasty. And then the, now she's like really good. And yeah, now this is so passive. Yeah, maybe knight g4 if h3, knight, you know, I don't know. Yeah, rook b8, like, just does nothing. Oh, look at this position. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice. And this <laughs> is uh, current right now. Winning a pawn and now two pawns. What's going on here? Black is trying to see how many times white can move the knights. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, this looks... Pretty A little discombobulated. I mean, it's funny how even an attacking knight at, at, uh, at like, the G7 square looks bad sometimes. I mean, the, the white can just play bishop C3, right? Knight H5 threatens knight F6. Oh, I see the... On a d2. Maybe it's time for d4 and knight and e4. Paul, I am physically. Oh no! You can't block that bishop on b2. That's not. That's not aesthetic. Yeah, but you can follow up with knight h5 quickly. Or pawn e4. Yeah, I guess. I don't oh. Know. Queen c4, the best try, because moving the knight e4 would have been yeah. three. I I so preferred bishop c3. Why that bishop was like worth about twelve points. Why? <laughs> yeah, you might. Yeah, ultimately you might be right. I mean, queen c4 is a nice move. Because if he'd gone bishop c3, then after queen d3, queen takes, rook takes, knight h5, right? And that position looks like Isn't two pawns up. Yeah, I think I mean, we're splitting hairs anyway. I mean, white's just two pawns up and probably bound to win in some way or another here. Fair enough. Fair enough. So let's uh, uh, look, look at the, look at this game really quick because I know it's uh, look at this action here between Mateos Bartel, Grandmaster, and and International Master Guillermo Vasquez. Wow. In downtown San Francisco, in case you can't tell. There it is, right there. Wait, wait, he didn't take that knight? Queen C1 check would have hurt. Oh, I didn't count. Well, that's, um, isn't Queen C1 check still going to hurt? Oh, well, at least white will survive into a rook versus two minor piece. Yeah. situation i mean yeah knight d3 queen e6 check it doesn't look good i guess i i like that you know just throw it in there what's queen e6 check king f8 is there something uh white can do afterwards yeah that's nice queen f5 check bishop f6 and Man. Oh, you're looking for brilliancies. Rook C2. Oof. I think you found one. That's nice. Yeah. He played it. Published. <laughs> he played it. <laughs> nice. 
Was this a Sicilian or something? What was this? Trumpowski attack. Oh, wow. Well, that... That seems to cook uh, White's goose. Is that a chess expression? It is now. Me mechanics expression. Jalapeno. <laughs> and this is an important uh, matchup. This is, uh, I believe it's table four. This is uh, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley against uh, University of Texas Dallas. That could and personally, it's an upset, right? I mean, Vas Va Guillermo Vaque Vaquez. Yeah, he's twenty. He's an IM because uh, Bartel uh, USCF is twenty seven ten, and uh, Vasquez is twenty five eighty eight. So sort of an upset. Is Bartel the um, the Hungarian? No. He is uh, Poland's his flag. Oh, that's right. Although Judith will be quick to tell you can never trust the flags on chess.com. But this is just lost, right? It's over. Ninety three is nice. I really like Queen E6 check, King F8, Whoa. Rook takes E2, Queen C1 check. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Hey, check this game. <laughs> Look at this game between uh, Unieski Quesada against Mikhail Antipov. Oh, these are two. This, uh, Quesada Perez from Webster B against uh, Missouri's Antipov. Wow just muscling in with bishop takes g6 the players are going bananas on their last day here and this is a, a this is a big uh game and a big match because uh grandmaster christian carilla whose birthday is today who's the head coach of missouri would love nothing more than to uh win this match and get into the top four and compete in the final four. A lot writing. Okay, so F takes G6. You play knight takes E5, I guess. And then rook takes knight, and pawn takes, right? And now you have a choice between king takes knight, <laughs> or you move the knight on F6 somewhere, right? Um. That seems forced, right? So far? Like, I guess on F takes G6, you could play D takes E5? But, so and Black can also play E takes D4 here, trying to block the, that's the queen out of the game with D3. You, yeah, yeah, it looks, Jesus. I mean, if, if E takes D4, Bishop F7, D, I mean, you can't go d3, right? Because bishop takes rook. So you gotta go rook takes rook, queen takes rook. I guess then you've got king takes knight. Jeez. A wild position. Yeah. Yeah. It's not clear, right? To me, anyway. I don't think either of these players are Hungarians either, by the way. Just thought I'd throw that in. What's the reference? Uh, was oh, asking, I was asking if Bartel was a Hungarian. But. And in the in the chat earlier, Judith was saying you can't trust the flags on chess.com. Oh, I see. As being representative. That's true, actually. Chess.com had me as Brazilian, which I would love. Right, but, and actually, and, and, and why she said that that was in part in part of it. Um, was it the Brazilian flag they had you? I thought it was your like incognito flag. You wanted to be anonymous. I didn't know you were a samba dancer. <laughs> yeah, I dance the tango. Let's I guess that's Argentina. So if if oh wow. you want, you want you want me to go back to that one or check this out? This is what a is a, a, this is just... a Shrita Swaran and Benjamin Bach. Black looks good here. Must be. Well, she's she was in bad shape, so this is relatively good compared to what she had. Right. Is, 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 true. This, is this better shape? Uh, that's the question. That is so true. I would play bishop a1 here. 
And uh, Aram Hakobian uh, won the match, uh, won his game on board wow. three for Webster against Roland Feng. And what that means is that despite Ladia and Alexander Lenderman's game, with two and a half, Webster wins this match and they win the 2020-2021 Pan American Championship. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations yeah. to Webster. Congratulations. Is is um is the Lenderman game still going on? That is still going. Uh, Ladia is fighting this. This is the position. Huh. So this is no longer um, germane to the standings. No. Uh, the only the only. What it might affect is uh, any kind of uh, tie breaks, but uh, it, yeah, it is not germane to the standings at all. Even if even if Lottie would win the game, it wouldn't matter. Uh, Webster won the match already because they have two and a half. I was going to ask exactly this: Why can't White just take the pawn and scoop the rook down? Suddenly, it's unclear. White gets two pass pawns. Yeah. Uh, like, like if black plays a, okay, so if a3 you could have taken, right? Because you can't go a2 because rook a5, and if rook a4 you go rook b5 check and rook b1. So now you take the pawn, right? And a3, oh, I see, and a3, you're going to have rook b1 at the end. That's the problem. All right, let's try this. Rook takes g5, a3, rook to g8, trying to. Yes, rook g8. Then, then right. rook b7. Um. No, then king b5, right? Oh, but if king b5, I guess you've got rook b8 check, king a4. Hmm. Rook g5, a3, rook, maybe, maybe rook check for, no, rook, Rook G eight, Rook B seven. Doesn't that just muscle the pawn all the way through? I think it doesn't work, but black has to be precise. Like Rook G eight, seven. You've got Rook A seven check, and then Rook A seven <coughs> you move the Rook over, and then you could bring the Rook down. Oh, and then you can't play Rook B one at the end. Right. Well, this this has got to be somewhere in the. This is in table base somewhere. So somewhere. King A seven maybe. He played it. <laughs> so we try Rook G five again. I guess. King B six. Probably you're maneuvering your way to block with the Rook. Right. Oh, that's the wrong move. Now rook b7, right? No, because then rook g5. Then king a6. Oh, uh -huh. look, at, look at that. Okay, king a6, you have to check again with the rook on b6. This is this is remarkable that that um, and shows the complexity of rook endings that we still are not sure exactly what's going on here. Yeah, maybe. I mean, for one thing, even just rook b six, rook a five check, rook a six isn't. I mean, maybe black just wins that end game, right? Because the king looks like. I think the rook and, and king could be able to stop the two pawns, right? Yeah, yeah, we'd have to count that carefully. But this certainly looks good, right? So I think you have to go rook g6 check, right? Yes. And then what's the move? If rook b6, you can go rook g8 again. Yes. Was Lenderman born in the USSR, the old USSR? 
That I don't know, actually. He's been in New York for at least 20 years. Uh, yes, St. Petersburg. What about King B7 or King B5 here? King B7, Rook G7 check, right? And King B5? And Rook, rook 2, rook A8, yeah. Rook A6, Rook to B8 check. We're just trying to get Rook B1 and be able to give up our Rook. Yeah, but yeah, that's true. And you do get back to B1 that way. The reason I was asking that about Lenderman is that he was once a Russian schoolboy. And look at this game. So I'll tell you, so, okay, so, so and, and Russian schoolboys are supposed to know their Rook and Pawn Indians, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Something right, like I'll, that, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a story about that. So I played in the World Junior Championship uh, the first time it was in uh, Kiliava, Finland in, um, I want to say 1984, I think. And um, I remember, by the way, I, I, I beat a promising young Indian chess player named Vishwanathan Anand, which was the, wow. only time, yeah, was the only time I beat him. He took about 10 minutes for the whole game. And, uh, <laughs> at some point he learned that if he had just taken an extra 15 or 20 minutes, he'd be able to beat everybody. So, uh, but that was, I got him before them. But anyway, um, uh, a number of us, like Igor Stoll, and myself and um uh oh man someone from israel i forget who but a bunch of a bunch of strong players strong junior players were analyzing this rook and pawn end game and i realized as we were analyzing it they knew what they were talking about and i didn't understand anything so when i got back home i spent like a month and i studied rook and pawn endings i got my yuri auerbach book and i got my notebook and I just studied the damn Rook and Pawn end games you for were, like a month or two. You were a student. And wrote them out of my notebook, um, and uh, and and learned some Rook and Pawn endings. So I wasn't a Russian schoolboy, but I did I did do some homework. You did it the hard way. Um, I had to, because because all the other kids already knew this stuff. So what's going on here? Looks like White's trying to run out of gas. Is it increment? Five second increment. I mean, objectively, this looks really good for black, right? Probably. With nine seconds left to objectively, hold Objectively, probably, yeah. Queen takes, no. G5 and G, no, oh, no, you can't go G. Yeah, G5 and then G6, because the knight on F4 would be protected. Well, now you can go g5, right? Because queen takes f4, g6 check? Wins the queen. b5, bishop f2 check. Both uh, players are, this is quite a dramatic game here, oh, I'm telling you. King f1. Wow. King f1. Take on f4. G6 check. Ah, uh, that's Queen should probably win that ending. Well, this looks. Oh, really he's playing, up. playing into this. This is going to be mate, right? Give Queen F7. Take, take, queen take on B1. Take the bishop. Take the bishop. There you go. Oh, what was wrong with knight E6? Oh, queen I seven. seven. But then Queen G8 check. No, it's pin. Oh, oh I see. trade into the ending. Oh, that was bad. Black can't lose the ending. This looks winning for black, right? C3 probably, right? Ah, oh, nice. Okay. C3 now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at this. And you got to go knight takes C3, I think. Oh, that was a mistake. What? Oh. Well, not clear. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think there's just one too many pawns, right? I think this is gonna be a draw. Well, white won't win? 
How can white win this? Oh, black should have uh, made a queen, or uh, now think, yeah, he's gonna have to make a queen. Yeah, it's gonna have to make a queen, and it's just gonna be a draw. Wow, look, yeah. look, look at look at this incredible. Wait, what? What? For, How is that doing? For Lenderman. Wait, hold on. This is. We'll start from this position here, and okay. Look, and look what ended up happening, right? Yeah. Rook A7, yeah. Rook B1. Yeah. Well, he can't lose this anymore, that's for sure. And here we are. This looks like just a, a draw, I imagine, right? Yeah, well, I'm, it's not clear why Lenderman went into this. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the thing here. Now, now it's a... I mean, this doesn't make it. There's no point. Well, no, it's just a draw, yeah. And uh, there, there's no point for Black to do this. Great, that I can see. great job by uh, <laughs> uh, Ladia Jurisic to like hang in there. Ashrita Iswaran drew her game against Grandmaster Benjamin Bach. And, oh! Uh, and uh, here's Ryan Tagazadi, another local. Getting. Busted here, probably. Oh, uh, yeah. I just noticed that there's a pawn on e2 over there. <laughs> oh, uh, this is that makes a difference. This should be over for white. Black's gonna win. Webster hey. and Webster team B defeated Missouri. And uh, oh, you know what? Yeah, g3, g2, no, g2, g2, and then bishop f1. Oh, come on, <laughs> what do they teach these kids these days? <laughs> they have no time to, to play the to learn the end game, and the, and, oh, right. and the, fine, the fine, game fine. is won. And uh, so, congratulations to uh, St. Louis University defeating uh, the Cal B team. Uh, and then uh, Webster Team B wins, and they defeated uh, Missouri. And uh, it looks like University of Texas at Dallas and Rio Grande. It looks like they drew their match, uh, two to two. But Wait, can uh, you get back to that crazy end game with Aladia? Yeah, the Bishop Knight end. Oh no, the Bishop Knight. Oh, was that uh, Shritha? Let me find her. I need to find the golden puppy. Let me. Uh... Yeah, these games all end around the same time, and and this is a good question, of course, uh, from Alexi. Who are the top four? Well, we're waiting for the uh, final standings. Uh, we know Webster Team A is going to be there because they won uh, the tournament outright. It looks like Webster Team B, uh, although uh, I learned that uh, only one school can represent in the final four. So even if Webster A and B place in the top right. four, it's it's Webster that goes. Um, so yeah, she's asking who are the top four. The the two that I know for sure, it has to be St. Louis University and Webster because St. Louis right. beat UC Berkeley B. What what's happening in this box? As Warren. They agreed to a draw. Well, here, well, here. This is how it ended. Wait, this was the final position. No, no, okay. no it's coming out here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Fine. And that's it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There it is. And uh, I bel let me see if there are any games going or if this is... That was relatively uh, simply drawn by White. What Very happened? well done. Yeah. Very well what done. What happened crazy endgame that we were looking at with the bishop versus the knight? And... Was that a draw? That was this game. No, it wasn't. Oh, you're, you're talking... I know what game you're talking about. Uh, I believe it was this one. Let me go back quite a bit. Was it... Was this... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here, here. Yeah, what happened here in this game? <laughs> this was probably the game of the round, right? Look at this. I mean, just for the mind-boggling complications.
the step ladder approach. Wow. What happened here? Yeah, it, it'll it'll come up. This was a heck of a battle. This game. Somehow, Black should be winning at some point, but sure, this was an amazing fight. Way. I think he should be going king d5. Black, yeah, maybe Black's king went the wrong way. H4 is weird. And then they uh, agreed to a draw right here. In the <laughs> final position. What a great game. Well, yeah, a lot of, a lot of amusing moments. A lot of uh, action. Uh, so we are waiting on the, uh, uh, for the, there's still some games going on uh, some of the lower boards. Uh, Patrick. So Patrick, Patrick, I didn't realize that, uh, that there was another way to evaluate chess positions. I thought it was like black is better, white is better, something like that, or it's drawish. But Nick has taught me that whoever's having more fun has actually got the better position. <laughs> what do you think of that? I think whoever's having more fun is getting the better deal. <laughs> I'm unclear whether it's a better position or not. But I just, you know, Nick has been like repeating this for a long time and I'm finally hearing it for the first time and I'm realizing it's absolutely true. Yeah. You know, and if who's he... ever having more fun seems to be having more fun. Well, you know? like, I no, I totally agree. I think it's a good point. Like, like there's a lot to be said for just knowing what you are trying to do. Yeah. As opposed to like, not being able to figure out or decide what you're trying to do. So I and, think and you're having more fun. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Judith is saying that all the games are done. Uh, we're waiting. We're double checking the results. Uh, I know when they get the results, uh, the chief uh, tournament director looks at them, gives them to the computer TD. He checks it and then goes through another check. Uh, just to make sure everything is correct. So they are doing that right now before loading up the final results. And what's going to happen is uh, they're also going to get together to sort out all the uh, all the prizes uh, for the under prizes and the, prizes. And the, the board prizes. And Glenn Panner's in the chat, chief tournament director, saying it's time to figure out who made the final four. I believe it'll be Webster and St. Louis University, and it's just trying to, to work out who the other four are, whether it's going to be UT Dallas, whether it's going to be Rio Grande Valley, uh, or whether it's going to be Missouri. Um, I think those are the three uh, contending teams to take the last two spots. And Alexi Root is uh, understandably rooting for UT Dallas. Some people are rooting for Guanajuato. I know I am. Or Chihuahua, <laughs> the University of Chihuahua. Chihuahua. So, uh, uh, represent. Hey, Patrick, uh, uh, do you have to go, or are you gonna hang with us uh, while we wait for the results? I'm afraid I'm gonna have to go in a couple of minutes, but um, but I am waiting to um, to make sure we know uh, who the final. Who the yeah, final and it's. Uh, oh. And uh, you you never participated in a Final Four, did you, or you any part I don't of them? They had Final Fours. We just we just played and tallied up the results. <laughs> it was very, but, but it wasn't as much fun, so this, this is better. Yeah, and it, it was uh, it was a really smooth every round. Uh, a lot of behind the scenes work going on. Uh, nobody has any idea, but. Uh, you know, everyone was, uh, even all the players, it seemed like uh, the player experience was, was really good. Uh, the, great. The, key, the team captains were, were, were awesome uh, to work with. Uh, just want to give a special shout out to Grandmaster Alex Onischuk, who's uh, uh, captain of the Texas Tech team, and uh, he's the chair of the College Chess Committee. I know him along with uh, the other members of the College Chess Committee, including uh, Andy Schley and uh, everyone else, uh, Al Lawrence. Uh, they did a lot of work in uh, you know, making sure everyone had their eligibility forms and uh, <clears throat> working with the online rules that were uh, special in particular. 
uh, to this one. The Final Four, Alexi Root, started in 2001 by Tim Redman of UT Dallas. Hmm. So uh, Patrick would have missed it for sure. What did you say? <laughs> you, you, you definitely missed the Final Four because uh, it started in 2001. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Actually mean. called the President's Cup. Oh, yeah, okay. And, uh, yeah, so uh, so we are waiting on the results. A Abel, mm -hmm. what is the best non-U.S. team? Uh, oh, actually, that, that, that's a good question. i got to look on the uh, – yeah, let me look. Because uh, the non – I'm pretty sure it have to be the University of Toronto. Because are the standings up? Uh, I think they're working them out, although I am looking. I'm looking on the mechanics page. Yes, and, uh, it, uh, it's for sure uh, University of Toronto because they were 19th place coming in uh, to the round. They had four and a half. And Chihuahua, no, Chihuahua was at four. So uh, it's conceivable. What about Guanaju Guanajuato's at three and a half? Chihuahua was at four, and uh, Chihuahua, coached by uh, uh, Yvette Garcia Morales, WIM. So uh, depending on how Chihuahua did uh, in Toronto, they would be battling out for the best uh, international team. We we can say. Alexi says there's a prize for best international. So we'll, we we shall see. Although, uh, you know, we were pulling hard for the, uh, the teams from Mexico, it would be nice to see uh, University of Toronto win that, uh, especially since they were the ones that were supposed to be the organizers uh, this year of the uh, Pan Am, of course, got uh, canceled the live event due to the, uh, the pandemic. So we shall see. Waiting for the results. Thank you all for uh, tuning in. Yep, and without the Mechanics Institute uh, or Toronto or whoever was going to run the event, um, the Pan Ams are still continuous since 1946. And I believe that's Al Lawrence in the chat right now, and, right. and he mentioned right. that in the broadcast. And uh, right. that's a, I mean that that's sort of a big deal, right? I mean, you know, you think about from <laughs> hey, hey Al, you think about an event starting from 1946 and, and all the pride and the passion that goes in to organizing that event every year uh, for it to discontinue because of this it sort of would have been a shame it doesn't take anything away from anyone that did it before but uh, it just shows how special the event is that even amidst all the challenges of what we're having now uh, the event was able to uh, go on and and, and continue on and continue its uh, lineage, so to speak. So uh, we were proud to be a part of that. And I know there are other great organizations that will uh, do the same next year if uh, we still have to do it online. So, uh, and th you know, the one thing about that's happened recently with online chess is uh, you've seen the organizers that have stepped up to uh, uh, take this opportunity to learn new things and learn to do it right and learn to do it in a way that protects the integrity of the game. And uh, we've seen organizations like, you know, Charlotte and, uh, you know, other others from uh, New York that org organize online chess and a lot of others, Pacific Northwest. So there are people that are able uh, to do this. Uh, if not mechanics this year, there are others. Uh, and sort of the, the learning is expanding as we continue to do more of it and learn from our mistakes. Uh, so uh, I'm optimistic that even for whatever I'm reason, not. if we have to do a large event online, we have the capacity, the the know-how and the willpower to, to do it. So um, yeah. And let me do a refresh here. And uh, all results are uh, tentative. Uh, pending fair play review and what have you. Um, but uh, we will be posting all the tentative results uh, as soon as we get them in, which uh, Glenn Panner and Brian Yang and Judith uh, are all uh, calculating. And uh, I hope the, the tournament directors behind the scenes get some rest because uh, the TDs were staring at uh, 40 cameras 
uh, actually uh, 80, mm -hmm. 80, 80 cameras because it was two cameras per player and per TD they were looking at 80 and not only looking at the camera but listening to sounds. I know some people got uh, penalized because their phones went off and things of that nature and they've been doing it over the last three days and that is a whole lot of work. I mean, I'm looking at one screen, you know, streaming throughout the day and, and I'm exhausted. I can't imagine looking at, you know, uh, two cameras per person times 40. Uh, I, I I said it sounds like a prison job for a prison guard. <laughs> <laughs> and Paul was saying we should call it, uh, you know, the Alcatraz Open or something. <laughs> but uh, Everybody's got a camera on them, but, you know. And uh, just kudos to the TDs. A lot of work goes in behind it, and uh, and congratulations to uh, Susan Polgar's uh, Webster team. And I know uh, there was a Facebook post uh, that came out that she said on this day, thirty years to the day, she became uh, a grandmaster, the the regular grandmaster, and she labeled it the men's grandmaster. Uh, got her three norms and crossed twenty five hundred. So this this would be a, a special day 30 years later uh coaching uh the best uh college men in the country uh to a title all right well thank you very much for uh for hosting for for allowing me to join you and yeah. um Thanks. congratulations congratulations yeah. uh to uh, uh susan um and to all the all the players um and uh i'm glad we were able to keep the continuous uh, Pan Am's going. Thank you, Patrick, for uh, joining us and being a part of it and uh, representing the Mechanics Institute. And uh, Kimberly's going to join us later when we do have the uh, the winners in. So uh, thank you for being a part of the broadcast. All right. Bye -bye, Th thanks, Patrick. Bye. And uh, Alexi is right. It is not a men's team. Uh, Anyone can play. You can have women's team, but you certainly can have women as part of uh, uh, the team to make up a team. So uh, misspoke on that. My apologies, Alexi. Please forgive me. Meant nothing by it. Uh, let me fix this here and uh, take uh, Patrick off and move Nick to the side. And I, I think later on we will be joined by uh, Susan. And uh, let's see if uh, Paul comes on also, who also coaches. And uh, they they are they are coaches for real, uh, in the in the sense that they they coach their teams like you see NFL coaches uh, coach, where you know you know give everything you have. Uh, put all your heart and soul into it. Um, they repeat it on a daily basis. I, mean, <clears throat> I know over the past week, if you look at a lot of the posts they put out, uh, just you know, never quitting. You know, you know, always try put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, and uh, you can see that resiliency in those moments where things get really tight. Uh, their players are battle ready, and uh, and and it shows. I and I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is their eighth title in nine years i believe that which, which is unbelievable so uh uh anyone in the chat if i'm wrong about that let me know i think it's uh eighth championship in nine years uh but what a feat because uh i mean you you look at all these teams i mean several teams fielded you know grandmasters on boards one through three and one through four and you know or a, a high im and uh to still perform at that level um, over the course of nine years is uh, just truly remarkable. Who are some of their alumni apart from Wesley? So uh, Ilya Nizhnik, mm -hmm. who played at the Mechanics uh, in 2019, I believe, <clears throat> and um, and uh, but going back, yeah, must uh, be, and Alexi, must let let me know. Uh, and actually, University of Maryland, Baltimore. <clears throat> uh, yeah, they were. Conrad Holt was UT Dallas. Uh, UMBC was not playing, but uh, back in the day, they had a very, very strong chess program. Uh, but didn't play uh, uh, this year. And yes, uh, Conrad Holt, U UT Dallas. Cameron Wheeler now at UT Dallas. I'm going to do a refresh. 
and still wait. And, and we knew that tabulating the results is going to take time, so uh, we're not rushing anyone. Uh, we figured they would be up by around maybe 4.30, 4.40, and uh, so we still have time. But we want to stay on the air so that we can announce the results as they happen. And, uh, hey, what do, so what do you think of this event, you guys calling it as uh, commentators and sort of witnessing it over the last three days? What was it like for you guys? Great event. <clears throat> yeah, fantastic. Um, very hard fought. Um, some very interesting games. Each day seemed to have its own kind of theme or something. Um, it and, was fun. <clears throat> and I know, uh, as uh, Lexi's mentioning in the chat, you know, Christian Carrilla and Julio Sedora are uh, UT Dallas alums as is Alejandro Ramirez. And I remember uh, Christian talking. Um, he's, he's one that's been very vocal about the opportunity of, of collegiate chess. Uh, and not just talking about you know the Pan Ams and the uh, President's Cup, the Final Four, <clears throat> but that there's an opportunity to expand interest in chess uh, through collegiate chess in terms of... Uh, Branding it and creating the same interest the way, you know, collegiate basketball, collegiate football, where you see the just the passion and the pride and the competition. And uh, and uh, I think he sees opportunity that it could happen like that uh, for chess, where uh, uh, collegiate rivalries get ignited. And uh, um, yeah, so uh, I'm curious to see that because... Even in this week weekend, uh, it was fun to watch sort of the rivalries. I know in one of the uh, yes, Alexi, and, and I will call them open teams from now on. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hammered by Alexi over here, but, uh, but yeah, that's how I learned my lessons. But uh, you know, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see because it was fun. There was a Cal Stanford match in one of the uh, earlier rounds. Uh, you know, there was a, you know, a Yale, uh, Cal, and so it's fun to see these rivalries and, uh, uh, and let's see if they play out over time. You know, uh, I just hope these fellas and women give it the old college try, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. And it's actually fun for me, just even being an alum, right, to follow uh, the Cal teams over the last three days. I mean, you know. I mean, I was following basically Cal every round <laughs> for my own biases, but uh, yeah, I'm 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 hoping this breaks out, even if it's a niche on some level to to the younger crowd. Uh, but I mean, if you go to a college football game, at least the ones I've gone to at uh, at Berkeley, there's so many older alumni. They come back to for the games and. Uh, you know, perhaps, perhaps uh, the same could be for the chess competitions where... What, how many colleges normally um, pre-pandemic participated in this tournament? And uh, I believe it was like between 50 and 60. Correct me if I'm wrong. Any of the previous organizers and Glenn Pan. Wow. Know, but... So we're, so we're, um, we're normal. Yeah, this, this was normal. I know Judith was really disappointed because uh, you know, Judith's always shooting big. <laughs> but, <laughs> How come there weren't 500 teams? Yeah, it was funny because we were, we, were, we were on a phone call with, uh, we were on a Zoom uh, call with uh, Alex Onischuk, uh, Judith and I. And uh, I, I, re <laughs> I re we were talking, and uh, at the time there were like 25 entries, and it was still like a, a few weeks out. And uh, uh, you know, Judah was saying, "Oh, you know, we got you know 20. You know, we probably get to 60." And and then uh, Alex Onischuk is like, "No, that sounds great." And then like, ah, "I know, but." You know, I was kind of hoping for 80 and then, nine, and then uh, Alex is like, no, no, that, that that's perfect. That sounds great. Uh, but the one thing I was a little bit surprised was that there weren't more Canadian teams. Uh, University of Toronto was the only Canadian team. And uh, <clears throat> that was a little bit of a surprise. But, uh, you know, the outreach is important, too. Even the Mexican teams that we had with uh, Guanajuato and Chihuahua and, uh, you know, and those, um, that actually took a lot of 
um, stepping in to help make that happen. Uh, it actually took a lot of time. So uh, it just goes to show when you have events like this where you know, you're trying to make outreach, especially if you're a US organizer, because the challenge is getting the colleges from the other countries to participate. Um, it, it takes a lot, a lot of outreach and a lot of uh, connections. And, uh, and I'm, I'm hoping that one of the things we learn is, you know, uh, especially for the College Chess Committee, stay in touch with those schools from Canada, stay in touch with those schools from uh, Mexico and just find out what it takes to keep them in the loop and, and keep them uh, uh, aware of, of what's going on because uh, I think it's going to be that continuous outreach uh, that, uh, uh, you know, that for them to, to participate. So, but this online event, it might bring new opportunities in Mexico. Yeah, and, and, and actually one of the things uh, it, it uh, proud to announce, uh, WIM uh, Yvette Garcia Morales, uh, she was streaming several of the rounds uh, in Spanish for the uh, for the Latin American audience, and uh, you know she was having like you know 200 viewers and 250 viewers, and and they were sticking with the the Mexican teams, but uh, that just goes to show the interest is there uh, to follow those college teams, uh, especially the the Latin American teams, because I mean they're they're as passionate about their their football, uh, you know soccer football. Um, they're just passionate about their chess teams. And, and a, there were plenty of players on, on the, some of the top teams that were um, Latin American players as well. Right, and playing for scholarship U.S. teams. Right, right exactly. And, yeah. and, and that's another thing is that e even if like a player from, say, Mexico or Canada – is one of the top players uh, at, of the college age, uh, the chances are they're gonna get recruited by Webster, Missouri, St. Louis, you know, one, UT Dallas, one, one of the uh, and scholarship schools. They're gonna have fans back in their home country too. Correct, correct. So uh, let's see how this all evolves. Uh, it was a lot of fun to, you know, I mean, I've watched the, uh, the Pan Am from afar before, but uh, it was, you know, obviously I've not followed it this closely where you're following round by round, especially now nine rounds. It's usually a six round tournament. Um, but uh, the one thing that the leader after six rounds remained the leader after nine rounds. So uh, in that respect, uh, Webster uh, um, persevered through the extra three rounds and uh, kept their... Uh, uh, kept well, their lead I mean, with the, the prevalence of DGT boards, let's say this tournament was run with DGT boards mm -hmm. in in a in a regular hall way, then we there could be the same kind of online commentary. And and in uh, the funny thing, I don't know what happened with uh, Charlotte. I'm gonna guess that they did stream uh, the 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 uh, 2019 version. Uh, oh, okay. The 2018 was not live streamed. They, I think they the the games were broadcast online, but they, right. they weren't streamed. Um, oh, so that's the difference. Okay, and all the boards had DGT boards, including the bottom rank boards. And no, 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 only only top boards. That that would be too many <laughs> DGT boards. But uh, the top right. the top tables were uh, uh, broadcast. But I, gotcha. I think I think we're at, at the age now where I, I think live streaming of this tournament is going to be an every every you know every year it's going to be done by someone and Vish 1080. Well, sure. Webster won. We're waiting on the final results uh, for the rest of the place. But Webster Team A uh, won outright. They won their final round. Uh, eight out of nine. They were a full point ahead of the field anyway. Did uh, Georgia uh, put a team out? Uh, Georgia, <laughs> Georgia Tech. The state of Georgia. Yes. Is that right? Georgia Tech played. Uh, they, they actually sent two teams. And uh, actually their A team was in 18th place with four and a half. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, Georgia's on your mind. 
George is on all of our minds, I suppose. <laughs> Emory didn't have a team in, did they? No, they did not. Emory did not field a team. The results are disputed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They have two results in dispute, and uh, they're going to complain to the chief TD at the U.S. Capitol. <laughs> so, if you're following all that that mess, I'm sure we could do a lot of uh, uh, sim yeah. similarities and puns with that one. But uh, sure. But uh, the one thing that I think is for certain is, well, I know for certain Webster, uh, they won. And I'm pretty sure St. Louis is going to qualify uh, because they were in second and won their final round against uh, Cal Team B. Sounds like a likelihood. It's uh, who is going to fill the last two spots for the final four and who wins the prizes, the board prizes and the under prizes. And uh, when all of that is figured out, I think uh, Glenn Panner is going to join us also. Uh, and uh, in, uh, in, in the results. Did you reveal who the mystery TD is? And uh, I did not. I did not reveal. So in our uh, Blitz tournament that we had last night, uh, we had 51 players. Um, uh, there, and quite a strong player. Yeah, yeah. And we had a player who was uh, on Chess.com's uh, name. It was the 2020-2021 Pan Am Mystery TD. Um, can I reveal that? Or is that still a secret? Uh, I know someone that's in the know of all of that is in the chat. Uh, we kept it a secret during the whole tournament. We never revealed it. We know that the Mystery TD was not Glenn Panner because he join the broadcast of the Blitz. And we know it was not Judith Starry because uh, she was also on the broadcast. And we know she wasn't playing because uh, the Mystery TD had some rough positions and uh, if it was Judith playing, she would have expressed that frustration and we would have seen it. So we know- And heard it. And heard it. <laughs> and, and bleeped it out. But uh, <laughs> so uh, if I can reveal it, uh, and did quite well uh, as a strong player, like a 2,000 plus level player. Had, had to be. And, and that turned out to be quite a little scrappy event um, last night. Yeah. With um, Jason Liang almost being called back for, uh, called in for his homework. Yeah, Jason Lang, who was like just tearing the tournament up, international master Jason Lang. <clears throat> uh, we received word that uh, he may not be able to play because uh, his mom was saying he's got too much homework. And we're like, <laughs> and then Judith, like, who has amazing convincing powers, convinced his mom and said, "Well, why don't you just let him play a few rounds? It's for fun. Let's see how it goes." And then the mom's like, "Oh, okay, all right." But then, as as we all know that. Once you go on a roll and win your third game and fourth game and fifth game and sixth game, you're not going to let that go until you get some blemish. Um, and uh, but then Kyron beat him. And Kyron beat him, and then uh, and then Kyron got beaten. So uh, yeah. So yeah, it was it was a Kyron lot of fun. Named out at the end there. Well, it was ten rounds of G three plus two. So uh, and uh, we didn't notice any Webster players playing. And, uh, yeah, the coaches told them all to stay home. Yeah, they were, and I knew that they would be forbidden to do anything like that that was going to uh, wear them out. So we are waiting uh, for the results. Uh, all the double checks are happening now. So thank you, everyone, for your patience and staying with us uh, while we yak away and uh, do a little philosophy, do a little... Uh, Let's go. Let's go. While we're waiting, let's look at this game a again, just because it was so fun. Yeah, let's go. And we never really figured out what was going what, on at all. What the heck happened here, right? Let's. Yeah. Should we go back to when all the fireworks? Uh, it was about. It seemed like it was fireworks the whole game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was here, and yeah. I think you know, this is where yeah, it started it was... getting like uh, a little bit crazy. Well, let, maybe go back even a little further. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Well, yeah, how about here? 
this this is good and then yeah so this is i guess a what is this a roy lopez nick uh, yeah or I, I think it started an italian game it was an italian oh, game an italian game yeah. right as opposed to the spanish game yes as opposed to the uh scandinavian yeah. game you the, pick the, your your country the mechanics game right and then we had this and I so what happened here so we had uh you'll see that coming soon and then we had this got oh. really wild and stayed wild for the end for many 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 moves so here we go bishop takes pawn the american king yeah, what's yeah. the american king okay. yeah. e5 and then I think uh, if, if the question of what's the American game, if you ask people outside of the United, the United States, they'll probably say it's E4, A6. Like that's so white the sacrifices game. a piece, a pawn, and then two moves later, another piece. Is that right? No, because it took a knight there on G6. Oh, I see. Right. And then uh, it was getting dicey, it was especially with the... You see that, right. that queen check there. Rook H8, and then the stepladder check thing, whatever it's called. Side step. And, uh, and Patrick said that the king should have later gone up to d5 yeah yeah if you go back just before going back towards the queen main oh no this good. right here instead of king f7 king d5 well Maybe. bishop first you take the um pawn on d4 ah you have, you have to do that so yeah, now take, now you can stop and think and yeah maybe should king take, d5 is safer oh because the bishop's protecting the uh, knight and the king is going away from the white queen. <laughs> <laughs> Got to run away from the danger. Instead of towards it. <laughs> but it's, it's still king to oh, it's five, so... rook to one would be still complicated. Yeah, I was just and... thinking about it. It's chaotic, you know, very chaotic. And I'm going to wait for uh, Glenn Panner to, to see if he joins and comes in because uh, I believe we have the... Uh, we have the results. We have the results. We have the results. Oh my gosh! Here we go. Yep. Would yep. you? Uh, are we gonna um, put them up on the? Uh... Well, I'm gonna wait for Glenn to come in. I uh, see. And uh, let me just confirm that that's what's gonna happen. Oh, here we go. Let me, uh, I gotta let people into the room. That's the, there we go. And joining us is, hey, it is wow. Judith. Very. Chief, and we'll be here soon too. Chief organizer Judith Starre, thank you for uh, coming on. And uh, I'm trying to get your uh, name in lights here. Yeah, congratulations on a great event. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sure. Tell tell us all about the uh, the TD experience from uh, that end because. Uh, People don't get a glimpse of uh, what that entails. <laughs> well, everything went um, everything went really fine, really good, um, um, and I'm still getting like some uh, feedback from players and questions, so I need to answer that and monitor that. But I mean, everything went really good. Um, First round is obviously always a little bit more hectic, a little bit of delay, and um, we, Brian and I, had to get into the rhythm as well. Um, instead of uh, like in how to start the games and how to monitor this many games, and, and we were both um, Zoom TDs as well. And by the second round, everything went really smooth. And um, first day was really make sure that the 
students know where to go, what to do with their games. And second day was really also like monitoring um, cameras, microphones, and third day is, is everything went really, really, I mean, high stake, right? And, and, and what I thought was the most, what would have been the most challenging, and actually you let me know how it was from your end, is that the players themselves had to be aware of what Zoom link to log into their two cameras. Um, but you, yeah. you had a nice little system where you, you know, you had uh, the Zoom link for if you're on boards one through whatever, right? So that the players knew they had to go to that Zoom link. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and I mean most of the most of the um, players knew where to go. We had one, a few players who mistakenly. We had one specific player who always got it wrong, except for the last round, where we actually threatened him for forfeit if he can't find the um, correct Zoom, but he did find it, so I was really happy. So, yeah, it, it was all good. I mean, it, it wasn't too bad, hopefully. I mean, it was um, simple, simple math or simple looking up your um, individual board, so everything went good um is this the most amount of players that you have dealt with in a turn in an online tournament um well it, it was close um close enough i think yes because uh, even the invitationals u.s invitationals we had to split it into both two weekends so one weekend we had 150 the other weekend we had 150 uh, i mean I was only responsible for 120 players starting their games, and Brian did the other half. Um, and and we had an amazing team, so it was really really good. So uh, yeah. I mean, like I mean, just extrapolating from this, could you have could you ease, could you imagine directing a a thousand player event like this? She's done it. <laughs> well, not with the camera. Well, with the cameras. Well, not with the oh, uh, not with the camera, but right. uh, I think we could have easily had double. The scaling of it, it's it's really a matter of staffing. So, um, if we had double the teams, then I would have had to have two more uh, TDs because we were at the limit of our cap capacity with Brian and I. Um, so, if we had like twice as many teams, we I would have had to have two more. Uh, TDs who can start the games, which um, actually on the staff we had Martha and we had Reka. Both of them can start games on chess.com, so probably would have. And then I would have had to a lot more Zoom TDs. Right. We had um, six uh, cheap Zoom TDs and six volunteers. Um, so I would have had to have a, a, a few more, <laughs> a few more Zoom TDs, which. I mean, it's not too hard to find. This is uh, relatively, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a job that we can train TDs for. So, um, I'm very that's interesting happy. that they already have a name for it—a Zoom TD. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we just call it that, right? It, it, like that's um, it. That, that's its own uh, thing now, right? It's yeah. you know, that's a Zoom tournament. Yeah, exactly, director. exactly, and it's you know, it's good. So someone is asking me uh, about uh, and the uh, the question still uh, a floor TD is now a Zoom TD. <laughs> yeah, well, so Zoom TD, section TD, floor TD, if, if, well, this is like all interchangeable now. Well, that's and, very and interesting. This, and one Zoom TD can have multiple sections. Obviously, currently we only have one section, one open section, but we had Zoom TDs. Sometimes I called. Um, them section TDs, but I mean, they all did a fantastic job. They not only made sure that the, the students logged in with two cameras, they instructed them how to uh, point the camera, what to do with the cameras and microphones. They also made really good notes about um, who's uh, violating those rules, um, warnings, um, be documented warnings, how often uh, we also followed up with emails um, to the captains and the um, coaches and to the players. So we all have that documented. Um, and 
If the fair play review reveals anything suspicious, we will use these notes as well as the recordings to make final decisions about um, about the games. So, so who are the t final four? Uh, yeah, well let let's get let's get Glenn here. Yeah, right? we're, wait, we're waiting on Glenn because he is the okay. chief tournament director, and uh, and then after Glenn. Uh, and after Glenn, uh, or, or with having Glenn, we'll also have um, the top team, right? Yeah. And actually, can they join yeah. right now? Yeah, and yeah. Let, let, let me take all of our names off and then just create, you know, let's just, uh, just make it one big Zoom. Yeah, uh, and then I'm going to see if I should. Uh... There we go. And... And I'm I'm in contact with both Paul uh, uh, and Anna. Anna is Susan's assistant. Um, she's wonderful, and and I think she also took our our, our video training. So now she's a that's right the club instructor or national instructor or something like that. So yeah. Anyway, so um, she's a big help. So um, she's joining us too. Uh, I mean, she was well, not joining us, I think, but she's helping. And I don't know if they're gonna uh, join with one camera, and and the team will be uh, behind Susan or yeah, no idea. I think that I, I suggested that to them because that's kind of a little bit more manageable. So okay. let's. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So if anyone watching us, um, students, coaches, captains, a huge thank you. I mean. You guys praising us because oh such a wonderful event but half of that is your doing because you train the players well you guys were there where you had to be you guys read the emails acted on the emails this is this is all very very important and this makes our job much much easier and and you guys contributed to the success of the event because it, none of this would have been possible without your cooperation and collaboration and attention so. and, and that's actually an important point because there there's so there's so many elements that had to happen for this tournament in terms of the two camera requirement in terms of like knowing what zoom link to do uh you know uh, communicating with the tds in an efficient manner and uh they all took the time and responsibility to learn how to do that and and, and thus make the tds job a little bit easier yeah. um so I think they are in the queue. That's what they are saying. Perfect. So the, they're knocking on the door. Knocking on the board. Yeah, exactly. And should we let? And then uh, let's bring Kimberly on. Let's bring everyone in. Yeah, when, bring us. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. And. Uh, Take on the jacket. And Paul, no. Paul, you are live. So. Uh, Whatever yeah. celebratory and our mechanic CEO Kimberly Sacrofano. <laughs> and uh, oh. Paul, turn on your iPhone because you're you are not usable. I, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. I'm not so good at these things. <laughs> okay, and, and and ask Anna to remove your virtual background because I know. Hold on. How do I remove my virtual background? <laughs> Paul, we have no Paul, idea. Paul only knows coaching chess. He doesn't know the virtual background. That's, and that's a great virtual background. Ah, there it is. That's much better. I like that background oh, a lot better. That's perfect. Oh my god. So, so okay, guy. So uh, Kimberly, let's, let's, wait for Glenn. Okay. let's let's wait for Chief TD Glenn Panner, let's but join. Joining us is mechanic CEO Kimberly Scrofano. Thanks for joining, Kimberly. Yeah, okay. thank you so much. This is exciting. And uh, Look at that that's the winning Webster team. Yeah, that's that, the guy stay behind them. That is the team right there. Congratulations. Wow. And, yeah, no. We are waiting for Chief PD Glenn Tanner and then for the results. Um, and uh, and and yeah. and uh, Susan and Paul are still coaching. They're coaching him where they got to stand. I'm sorry. No, that's great. We want to <laughs> jump. Never ends. No, it never ends. It's not supposed to, right? When you're on top, yeah. now you got to work even harder. And then you have to feed them, right? And then you got to feed them. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. congratulations to the team from Webster University. Uh, mm -hmm. Came back after a round seven loss and then got the job done in eight and nine and took clear first. 
uh, and regain the title. How many titles is that in the last uh, nine years, ten years? This is eight titles in the last nine years. Eight titles wow. in the last nine years. And then, That's amazing. And, and so you, you've reclaimed the title from uh, Texas Tech the way uh, Rocky did it uh, from uh, Clubber Lang in Rocky Three. You've re regained the championship. And uh, you, you had one player, uh, Aram Hakobian, who- Yes, he, the king himself, right? Here. Yeah, man, that, that was some exciting games you were playing uh, in, 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 in victory <laughs> and defeat. But uh, you were entertaining the audience, uh, so we, we appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, but not us. He's making the coaches very nervous. <laughs> uh, I can't imagine that. Yeah, I imagine he's giving the coaches heart attacks, but uh, he was one of the heroes today. Congratulations on that. And uh, Susan, before we uh, uh, go on with the, the festivities, uh, I know you put a Facebook post, which was uh, awesome. 30 years ago today, you achieved your third and final GM norm and became a, a grandmaster. And uh, now you're coaching uh, the top college kids in the country. Uh, a very special day, January 6th for you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's nice to remember those special moments and it's really nice to celebrate it with these special moments. So <laughs> thank you guys. Great job. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, great. Not only, Congratulations. Not only she became a grandmaster, she became the first woman who achieved the grandmaster in the male dominated world, like uh, right? So it's it's something amazing and your role model for all the girls around the world and in the US. So thank you for your leadership, Susan. It's amazing. And uh, sure. we're still waiting on Chief Tournament Director Glenn Pan. Yeah, I know he's coming. I think he had to uh, address a few issues. So uh, thank you all so much for for your patience and everything. Um, and also whoever is watching us, I know a lot of the players and coaches are watching us. Again, thank you so much for your help because this event would not have been possible and it would not have been successful without your help, your attention. Um, it was really, really something, um, something truly special and all of you. And so much Judith, fun. big thanks to you, Glenn Abel Mechanics Institute and all your staff for your hard work the last, I guess, three days and for the last month or so. <laughs> month. <laughs> 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 Yeah, probably the hardest one was get the rules accepted by by the college chess committee and the EB and then get it posted. I think that was the, the hardest work, right? And then even from the, the bureaucratic side, I was trying to get contracts signed. I'm sending them to Kimberly and she's getting them back to me right away. So, you know, it's a, you know, it's a whole machine and all the parts yeah. need to be working. And uh, But you guys are real pro, so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Definitely. Definitely. And... Uh, I, I'm a little bit bittersweet because, uh, you know, my UC Berkeley, you, you, were, you were slapping them around in the last round. I wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> but they, they really did a great job. I mean, we are so proud of Berkeley. Um, oh, my gosh. Team. All five teams have been amazing. And, and Josiah, Arjun, Yashrida, and all of you guys, uh, big shout out to you because it's been a pleasure seeing you guys play and compete at this event. Well, we saw Josiah not long ago at the Spice Cup. Yeah. That's when he broke 2400 to officially become an IM. So we're very happy to see that. Yeah. And uh, it's also worth mentioning that they are probably the only team up in the top. I don't know how many teams that are non-scholarship uh, universities. Yes. It's amazing to do this and achieve this without and, scholarship. And to see them on the top two tables, a non-scholarship, chess scholarship a university, uh, I was very proud. And uh, to have five teams and, uh, you know, they got a shot at the title in the final round. And what more could you ask for, right? Uh, you know, we knew it was going to be a, a big ask, but, uh, you know, they, they did everything that could be asked of them and uh, we're particularly proud of them. There were a lot of us local, there were a lot of the local lads were playing. Yeah, players that play mechanics all the time, like Josiah Stearman and uh, yeah. You have Ezra Chambers and uh, yeah. 
Cameron Wheeler's out there too. He All won the of- he won the Falconer Award uh, two three years ago. So right. uh, yeah, so you know they they grow up and they go to college and then they uh, play in this tournament and uh, then we get here. to see him. <laughs> they stay here. So uh, we had Glenn, a yeah go ahead. Is is Glenn in the weights by any chance? Yeah, I keep looking. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know. So we can get the results. I know, I mean, uh, I know you guys have to wait, and I thank nope. you for your patience, everyone. Patience. Um, Glenn was the chief PD of this event, and uh, his um, the amount of hours he spent uh, consulting with us, uh, preparing for this event, as well as on Sunday we had back to back meeting, probably a good fourteen hours. From nine a.m. Yeah, all the From way. Nine a.m. all the way till uh, whatever six. Uh, or 8 p.m. And I, then I, I lost tra- starting on Sunday I lost track of time completely like that I don't even know what day it is and then um, there he and is then- on a vacation after this <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're gonna take a vacation uh, probably of a day and then uh, figure out what else we can do but, but I have uh, my five-day but, vacation yeah. in January lined up so. yeah <laughs> But Kimberly, Kimberly's going to take care of us. She's going to make sure that we get some rest. Uh, right. She she looks out for us because she knows we don't look out for ourselves. So. And joining us. I'll shut up all your computers. <laughs> I could, you'll probably do that. Now we have our IT guy. And joining us is Chief Tournament Director Glenn Panner. Thank you for joining Thanks, us. Glenn. So now we can announce the results and uh on top of the results the important thing is who are the top four teams that get to play in the president's cup the final four and uh do you want to do the announcements or would you like me to uh i just logged on so if you wouldn't mind uh taking it what uh, i miss absolutely uh now nah, just well let's let's start with an official uh, introduction to everyone so thank you everyone for joining us for the official um, award ceremony, closing uh, ceremony, all uh, f- results are, fi- are tentative until the fair play review. And uh, joining us, Kimberly Scrafano, I'm so sorry, Kimberly <laughs> Scrafano, a Mechanics Institute uh, CEO. Um, also joining us, uh, Glenn Penner, National TD and the Chief Tournament Director of this event. And we have our two amazing uh, broadcasters, Peter Master, Paul Whitehead, and Grandmaster uh, Residence Nick DeFermian, and of, of course the chief organizer, or chief co-organizer Abel Talamant as he's the chess room director. And also with us is the first place winner Webster team. So <laughs> Abel, would you mind um, doing the favor of announcing the winners? Yeah, on uh, behalf of the Mechanics Institute and uh, uh, the US Chess Federation, uh, whose event, uh, uh, this was, and uh, Alex Onischuk, the chair of the College Chess Committee, who put himself put in a whole lot of work to make this happen. Uh, we'd like to congratulate the winners of the 2020-2021 Pan American Intercollegiate Chess Championship, Webster University. Congratulations. Yay. And uh, that with eight out of nine, uh, you were clear first by a, a, a full point. Um, and Good. so congratulations for uh, that victory, which now marks your uh, eighth championship in the last nine years. Uh, just a perennial powerhouse and uh, congratulations for that. In second place, clear second is St. Louis University. So congratulations to St. Louis University who qualify for the President's Cup with that second place finish and congratulations to coach Alejandro Ramirez uh, for that. Uh, We have a three-way tie, three, four, and five uh, on tie breaks. In third place is Webster University's Team B with uh, six and a half. So congratulations, you take uh, third place. Congratulations to Webster. And uh, in fourth place with six and a half on tie breaks is the University of Texas uh, Rio Grande Team A. So congratulations to Rio Grande Valley, who also qualify for the President's Cup with that finish. And the final spot for the President's Cup, uh, because Webster takes first and third, so we need one more. Congratulations to Texas Tech University and the A-team. They qualify with their fifth place finish 
uh, with six and a half points. So congratulations to the Texas Tech team, the Red Raiders, and uh, Grandmaster Alex Oneschuk, who is the coach. So those are the four teams, Webster, St. Louis, uh, University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, and uh, Texas Tech. Those will be the uh, President's Cup participants. Uh, and uh, I just have to make a mention, I feel really bad on his birthday. Uh, University of Missouri finished in sixth place just out of the Final Four qualification, but a fantastic result. And uh, UC Berkeley, Team A, finishing in seventh place. Uh, very proud of them. They are the top uh, non-chess scholarship school. And uh, with six points, Missouri, uh, Cal, University of Texas, Dallas A team, uh, and then the Rio Grande B team at six points. Also Princeton and the Cal B team with six, and uh, also with six in 12th place is University of Chicago. So. Those are the finishers, and uh, so congratulations to Webster and the winners. Uh, should we go to the uh, the other prizes? Like top international team goes to the University of Toronto. So congratulations to Toronto, who the Hart House Chess Club in 2020 celebrated 125 years. Uh, so it, it, I'm glad they were able to uh, win the uh, international prize. Uh, the top women's team, congratulations to the University of Missouri women's team uh, with uh, five points. Uh, the Mizzou women uh, finished in 22nd overall. Um, I have the top Division II team first place. Uh, I'm guessing that represents the size of the school in terms of the... Actually, um, Abel, for, uh, in college chess, the divisions are actually rating uh, okay. based. So oh, two, so like under 2,200, mm, under 2,000? Well, not under, but uh, between 2,000 and 2,200 got it, uh, as got an it. average. And it goes down like that, like classes. Oh, and uh, if, I, if I could just weigh in for a oh, second. Oh, yeah, absolutely. One of, the, one of the fantastic things about this year and, uh, and, and, and the, uh, uh, the format that we had with it being nine rounds, teams really could control their own destiny and they could have a bad round or two. And it really, uh, we, we were able to, to be blessed with seeing the best teams play each other even more than they normally do. Right. Um, right. And uh, I, I think it created some, some fantastic competition. So, um, you know, if, there, if there's a plus side to not being able to do this uh, in person, I think we got to see more chess and that's always a good thing. I know Paul and I were talking from round four. I mean, you were seeing Grandmaster versus Grandmaster and, and several of the, the table matchups. And uh, we saw it all the way throughout. So we got a lot of competition. Uh, it was definitely a gauntlet. And, the, and we were saying at the beginning of the tournament, the nine round winner is going to be the true winner because they're, they're going to have to play a lot of good teams uh, to get they're through gonna, it. They have to be almost as tired as the tournament directors. I got to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and we have in the chat, we have a request to repeat one more time who's in the final four. So, uh, so it looks like the final four is going to be uh, Webster. St. Louis, uh, University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, and Texas Tech. Those will be the final four. Uh, yes. Congratulations and, to Webster B, who took third place. But since they took first place as well, they cannot send two teams into the final four. So congratulations to all the four teams who are going to final four. So the top division two team is uh, Yale University. Congratulations to, uh, I believe it, they're the Bulldogs from Yale. And then the top division three team is the University of Washington. Congratulations to the University of Washington. John Donaldson will be proud. Yes. As the top division three. The top division four team goes to the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Congratulations to um, Minnesota. Uh, top division five. Coach Andy, hometown of Coach Andy. Uh, uh, who, Andy Schley? Yeah. He's uh, Wisconsin. Okay, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> Wisconsin Whitewater. Yes, no, never mind. And uh, the top Division Five is the University of Toronto B team. So uh, wow. two prizes for the Toronto teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this is fantastic. Uh, the top Division Six team goes to Howard University. 
So congratulations to Howard playing in their, uh, I believe their first Pan Am. And uh, they were excited to play and uh, they get top division six. Uh, we actually have a mixed doubles prize. Uh, Glenn, you want to tell us about uh, the mixed doubles? Uh, I don't actually have that uh, in front of me. Um, uh, so well, if you have it, please read it. But let me just weigh in one more thing about Howard. Uh, it's worth noting that um, uh, despite having uh, a very low rating, they also were responsible for pulling off one of the largest upsets in the event too. So they really had a, a tremendous and, uh, and, and they earned their uh, Division Six championship. They had players that play, they just haven't played in uh, organized chess or a rated chess. I think they had one player that had a rating and the rest were unrated, but they were clearly not novices. So, but what about board prizes? We will get to that, I believe. Right? We have board prizes. Yes, I can. I can. But the but the prize. but the first place mixed doubles goes to St. Louis University's Team C. So congratulations to St. Louis mm. C. And uh, Judith, if you want to do the board prizes, and the board prizes are the top players for board one, board two, board three, and board four. Yeah. So on first board, uh, we have a clear. Winner for a first place, the board uh, one first place is Grandmaster Andrew Tang from Princeton A team. So congratulations, congratulations. Andrew. Um, the second uh, board, board two, we also have a clear a winner there, Grandmaster Yun uh, Cuesco Perez from West B. Uni, where are you, Uni? Congratulations. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Congratulations, he's, uh, he's uh, by half point, uh, eight point out of nine, amazing performance. Really? Um, and then uh, third board, uh, we have a two-way tie, and based on tiebreakers, the, the winner is Grandmaster Razvan Prout from UT Dallas A, uh, with seven and a half out of nine. And then board four, we have uh, with eight out of nine, uh, Alexei Sorokin with Texas Tech uh, University, FIDA master. And uh, FIDA master Alexei Sorokin, we did, uh, you guys did talk about how unique that is. So, and uh, Le Lenderman didn't win top board four? <laughs> no, Lenderman didn't win. He was seven out of nine and, and, um, and uh, Alex Day was seven. I just want to say out to Alex, it, it's a lot of fun having you play our events. And when you come on the, the commentary uh, at, for the mechanics tournament. So thank you so much for uh, being part of that. And uh, yeah, absolutely for your activity. And may I have, may I suggest one more thing since it's so much fun to have Susan and her team there. Uh, can we announce the players for the two teams that were on top and ha have them wave us um, a hi? Absolutely, my pleasure. So, Lazaro Brisson, was our board one. On the A team, can you wave? <laughs> the there he is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me have Benji. Benjamin Gladura from Hungary. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> board two. Board three, we have Aram Agobian from Armenia. Well, there he nice. is. <laughs> and board four was uh, Alex Landerman. Oh. <laughs> so that was A team. On our B team, we have Peter Prohaska from Hungary. Yeah. He did the FIDE trainer seminar with us. <laughs> yeah. And then we had Yunaski, board two. The manager. Here he was winning board two, so congratulations. <laughs> Leo Cordova from Peru. Yeah. And last but not least, uh, Jan Berg from New Jersey. Sure, <laughs> Thank you. So that's and, and, and you know, John Donaldson, who was commentating for rounds uh, seven and eight, he sort of made mention that even though this is a Pan American championship, because of the scholarship nature of many of these schools, we actually have people from over 20 different countries participating. So uh, the outreach extends beyond even the Pan American just because you get so many top players from so many different countries uh, coming in participating. So you know, it makes it an even more special uh, uh, event and uh, just bring in all kinds of different communities together through chess. Definitely, very international event. And uh, and uh, Kimberly, did you did you want to say anything to the the teams and uh, the winners? 
No, absolutely. Congratulations to everyone. You know, we're really excited. I, I know this has been a different Pan Am tournament than most folks are used to. Uh, so I just want to thank everyone. And I want to thank, you know, the staff at MI. I know, you know, Mechanics we've, has really come together to bring this. But, uh, but everyone who was involved, uh, we're really excited that we were able to, to, to continue the tradition that's been started in 1946 and didn't, didn't want to miss a year, even though it's been kind of a strange year. So I just want to say thank you and congratulations to everyone. This has been thank you, thank you. And thank you for the Mechanics Institute for hosting the event. We appreciate sure. it. Sorry. And, and uh, another thing to mention, Webster University in particular, I, I think this happens for a lot of the top schools. I mean, you get the people, once they graduate, they come back and are still part of the program and uh, Why don't you introduce? coach the yeah, next one. One second, Abel. Let me uh, introduce you some people. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, Ilya. Yeah, yeah so that's me. Ilya and uh, yeah. Blair of Vietnam, they are both uh, alum of the SPICE program at Webster University. And they are here uh, the whole three, all the three days and uh, supporting the team and helping the team. So we very much appreciate their presence and support and uh, they are the perfect example that even once they graduate they are still part of the program that's that's fantastic just giving back and we had Iliad mechanics uh not that long ago so it was nice to right. see him again yeah i would love to uh, to visit mechanics institute again yeah same here yeah. Our, yep. any, any any time when it is safe to do so <laughs> we would love to have you back <laughs> yeah yeah we met and there and uh, Glenn, any final uh, thoughts? And Judith from the chief organizer and director. Uh, Judith, do you want to go first or? Sounds good. So, I mean, it was so much fun. I, I love events, especially Pan Ams. It's very close to my heart. And I really thank you, thank everyone, the teams. Um, I said it a few times before, but I think our success really depends on the coaches and the players and they did amazing. And we could not have done this event um, this successful without their help and collaboration. So uh, first and foremost, and the biggest part goes to the teams and captains and coaches for helping us um, by relaying messages and responding and, and being there where they had to be to be able to start the game. So thank you, a huge thank you. Thanks for all the participants. So thank you. Um, I, I'd like to add that, uh, you know, there's a few other people I would like to thank as well, besides, of course, uh, Abel, yourself, and, and, and Judith, and the Mechanics in Institute. But um, we, uh, we pulled this off, I think, rather well, and it was because of a lot of people pitching in and, and putting us in a position to succeed. And I think it's worth noting uh, the outstanding job that John McComiskey did uh, in, the, in the back room, keeping all those rounds on time and uh, he was tremendous. Um, the college committee was such a great help. Uh, Alex Onishuk was very supportive, in fact. And uh, when, we, when we had questions about the format and, and keeping in the spirit of the event, um, the college committee was, was really tremendous. Um, so I, I, I think, and, and of course our staff, I mean, too many to mention, but everyone on that staff contributed to this thing running smooth and uh, I couldn't be happier about it. And uh, I just want to thank uh, Paul and Nick because uh, I mean they, they were streaming with me you know all three days. Uh, it is tiring uh, to do it. I don't know how some of these streamers do it professionally. It's just like wears you out. But uh, thank you for just enhancing the broadcast. And uh, you know along with you know our guests, we had you know John Donaldson and Patrick Wolf uh, here in the final round, and just everyone else, Kostya Kavutsky and uh, Kyron Griffith. Uh, Alexi Root and uh, Alexi is always a big fan of mechanics and uh, you know she's in the chat uh, just thank you just it, it's it's the whole team dynamic and everyone contributing just adds so much flavor and uh, just passion and just pride in what we do and uh, everyone was amazing from the players to the uh, the, the staff to uh, just everyone that was in support of all this and it, I'm, I'm proud of how this event went down um, and uh, in a world where there's you know a lot of chaotic things going on and a lot of things to look negatively upon, I hope what happened over the last three days 
uh, starts off 2021 and gives a lot of these kids a lot of memories that they won't forget uh, because uh, there are positive things to uh, think about and do uh, even when things uh, around us uh, don't look favorable. So uh, let's take uh, these moments and these times and uh, move forward. And uh, we look forward to more chess in 2021. And uh, Abel, if I can close with just one last thing. Absolutely. You know, in, in, in work, in life, in, in these events, um, you could tell that they're in the most special events when people are having fun doing it. And the, the best run in that case. And... Uh, I think our staff had a lot of fun. I really hope the players enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed watching your stream so much because you and Paul were having so, so much fun. I was I was kind of jealous. I'm like, wait, no, I want to be talking to them. Um, so it you was- You are. Uh, pardon? I said, you are talking to us. <laughs> Thank you, Glenn. Yeah, Thank you, Glenn. Glenn really fortunate. But um, I, I'm so glad to be part of such an event that was so much, so enjoyable for so many people. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. And, and let, let's say the final thanks to Glenn. I mean, I, the amount of hours he spent on this event, and it really comes down to the Chief PD because ultimately he is responsible for everything, every single decision we make. and The complaints and the, <laughs> for the, the player. <laughs> he, he or, or the feedback, <laughs> as captains would say. <laughs> Constructive and, criticism. And Glenn's <laughs> knowledge and experience with Pan Am, I, I knew that he had to be the Chief PD of this event. And just thank you, Glenn, for your hard work and dedication for this event. It's been an amazing um, honor to work with you. So everyone watching, thank you for following uh, the Pan Ams. And uh, yeah. once more, congratulations to Susan Polgar and Paul and the entire Webster team. Congratulations, everyone. 2020, 2021 Pan Am champions. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, everyone. So uh, before we sign off, uh, I just want to say, Take care of yourselves and have a good rest of the evening. And uh, thank you for your support of the Mechanics Institute. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.